Hello team and welcome back to Sunday Vibes. We are in the pub, the Phoenix, Cavendish Square, London. Come and get your beers here. Joined today by Zachary Jellab and Patrick Van Straten. Now we've come out of the heat wave. Mm -hmm. Have you recovered, Patrick? No. Did no. you have a wee babby? And I'm uh, imagining she didn't take it well. She did not take it well. But like her main thing at the moment is uh, she gets really furious. About things, where she gets that from. Really, <laughs> really funny. But yeah, but she does it in a fun little way where she kicks her little legs like a fish. Um, That's yeah, she's, she's okay. I'm just noticing your earring, by the way. Is that what do you a new think? earring? What do you think? It's gone back in. A couple of years Did out. Did you get it pierced? You no, know, I got it pierced when I was about 16. What, oh, so you just had to re pierce this, basically? No, with the, no I've yeah. worn, worn them infrequently. Oh. But I feel like I needed something to make me feel younger again. Now I've turned 30. So there it is. <laughs> Vulnerable. My vulnerability showing in the first 30 seconds of the show. <laughs> like it looks it. good, mate. It looks Thank really you, good. It looks How good. are you? Talking uh, of looking good, Chelsea's most eligible bachelor. Let's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. I'm all right. Thank yeah. you. I'm very good. I'm very good. Um, yeah, You're we'll in the top 1% the, uh, on OnlyFans, right? Uh, maybe, maybe one day, maybe one day. Uh, maybe one day. Chelsea's fittest <laughs> fan at 2K22, Zachary Jellab. That is actually true. Uh, let's move in to the show because Zach is getting embarrassed. <laughs> and the main question on today's show is all about the worst summer transfer mm. window. We ask you guys at home on Twitter who you think is currently losing who you think is currently losing the transfer window. Yeah, got that right the first time around. Um, we're going to go through those suggestions and then pick our own come the end of the show. So we could say a few things here and end up with egg on our face. But we sort of run that risk every week, don't we? So why not? Let's, thing, just, really. let's just move along with it. Um, let's start with at WB suggestion of AC Milan. He's put missed out on Botman, Sanchez, Renato, that is, and Dybala have only signed Origi. Very matter of fact, his submission, but uh, it does not seem happy with it right now. Botman, of course, went to Newcastle. Dybala went to Roma. Renato Sanchez still undecided, although it looks mm. like he favours a move to PSG, which is pretty bizarre given the complexion of that squad um what do you make of it so far that their, their, their dealings because they've been linked with a few players that i think we both like yeah i mm. mean i think we'd agree that their targets are good and let's bear in mind you know they won the title last season they did it with a young squad for a large part their business this summer is going to be keeping hold of key players so if they get if they get out of the summer and they've still got benacer tonali kalulu tomori leal then they'll see that as overall, mm. like that's the center of the project for the future. They've re-upped Latin Ibrahimovic, which I think they see as like quite important business uh, when it comes to kind of keeping experience in the squad. Um, they'll be disappointed to miss out on Botman, but maybe not at the price point it ended up being. I yes. think they thought there was an opportunity there and they won't be too concerned because let's be honest, Kalulu and Tomori were both sensational for them last season. Um, yeah, not an area of need come the end of the season, no. really, with Kalulu stepping up sure. in Kier's absence. Yeah, I mean, Romagnoli's obviously gone now, so they are going to need to think about... They, I think they'll get somebody, but it is always difficult. We talk about this, you know, getting a player in who is not going to be a nailed-on starter, that is quite a difficult way to recruit, to say to someone, well, you'll have a shot at the first team, but you might not automatically go in. Um, especially for a player like Botman, who has really excelled yeah. at Lille mm. and, and and could, to be honest, probably get paid better at Newcastle. Um, but their targets, I think, are solid. You know, we've seen Renato Sanchez. Okay, there's a little tussle there with PSG. But I think that, again, if they miss out on him, it's not the world's worst circumstance. No. He is perennially injured. I think um, the fee that's been agreed is 15 million euros as well. Like so it's nothing. Yeah. But he, again, is going to be a rotation guy, right? Like, I mean, maybe he comes in and plays more of the Kessier role, but... It's not like they're desperate for the midfield reinforcement. Similarly, I mean, Charles de Catalera, um, he, he, I think, is a really good opportunity. But again, you'd expect him to rotate with Brahim Diaz, um, who I think got about 1,900 minutes last season. There's somebody else who I'm forgetting who is also getting some attacking minutes. Salamarcus. Yeah, Alexis, Alexis Salamarcus. Um, so, so, again, you know, like, this is a prospect for the future mm. as opposed to somebody who's coming in so that, like, you can definitely get back to back titles. I think these are really smart signings, though, or really are really good targets for them to make. They're underpriced, or or at least Sanchez is. Uh, De Ketelara is he? Okay, it's in the Belgian league, and there are a couple of guys doing this. Noah Lang as well, but he is kind of tripping all the bells that you would want a player to, which kind of signal potential superstar. Yeah, you know, like there's, he's there's doing everything. Yeah, sure. Like he's played every attacking position. Huge xG. Huge expected goals assisted, massive pressure numbers, really good dribble numbers, great shots. I mean, like he's a big guy as well. He's like six mm. four. Got Champions League experience at a very young age. This is this is really interesting possibility. 
Um, so, you know, I I wasn't a big fan of the Origi move, but it's fine. Like, I'm not concerned about AC Milan. I think that they're perfectly happy to keep their powder dry and see what shakes out as the window goes on. Um, because, again, the squad doesn't need major surgery. I think that they'll probably... I think there will be some really interesting opportunities that come up. We've actually talked about this in the context of Brentford. You know, we said Brentford are kind of happy to to wait and see when the striker market, market sorts itself out, when the centre-back market sorts itself out. There will be a bit of musical chairs and there'll be some guys left standing. Mm. And I think Milan at that point will be happy to jump on one or two of those. Yeah, I'm quite pleased to see them stick to their guns. The sort of vision that Gazidis and Maldini outlined a couple <coughs> of years ago. The fact they're moving for the Ketelare rather than Paolo the baller. You know, would suggest they're, they're going to stick with young, hungry, versatile players with sell-on value. Yeah. And I was reading an article by James Horncastle on The Athletic. Like, the Catalaris played left wing back at points. Eight at points. He is there's not a position that guy hasn't played. I think it was 18 goals in 49 appearances last season. So solid, not prolific. We've seen people put up frightening numbers in the Jupiler Pro, haven't we? That haven't gone on to necessarily set a top five league alight. But yeah. If Leeds, if Leeds don't get him, I think he will go to AC Milan. I think Leicester interested him as well. I think they were one before they realised their bank balance. They've got to talk some the, things out. The zilch there, I mean, but we will move on to Leicester soon. What do you what do you make of well, how things are unfurling at AC? Was, one of the one of the best things they've done is getting Maldini and, and Co to sign a new contract to to keep them at the club and board level and keep them kind of going where they're going forward. You, you mentioned how well they've been doing recently and, and that setting that structure up and making sure it is young signings they're bringing in that can take um, AC Milan forward, but also have great sell on value if they do eventually look to, to, to sell them on. Um, and yeah, I think Pat's kind of made the, the right point there. Like it's about keeping the, the superstars up top that have done really well. Liao is someone who yeah. was being rumoured, maybe being looking at by Real mm. Madrid. Chelsea's at, at, one, at points were yeah. interested in him. Um, and maybe, maybe next season is, a, is an, another season under his belt in Syria, trying to win the win the title again, and maybe then he'll look to, to possibly move on. Um, but keeping him and, and, and keeping, uh, I think Maldini and Co at the mm. at the board level and make sure they don't they don't move on um, is better than than some of the guys that they're missing out on because they're mm. not the, the worst. And if they do, as you said, should get the targets in, if if Ziyech does come online, because I, I probably think they do need maybe a right winger as well. Mm. Um, mm. Then, yeah, uh, Salah Marcus is super upgradable on that right-hand side. Indeed. He, he didn't contribute much in the way of goals and assists. And I'll tell you what, Ziyech is someone who would yeah. thrive in the Syria. Mm. Is that much, that, with that much time on the ball, the, the pace of the league per se, I think it'd, uh, it'd be fantastic. But overall, like, I don't think it's as bad as maybe uh, uh, our mate here's making out. Yeah, they've supplemented the youth that you were talking about with experience well, haven't they? And I think that's where the Ziyech deal um, makes sense. They're clearly, their transfer strategy this season is clearly let's focus on attack because I think they had the best defence mm. in Serie A last season, but only the fourth best attack. So there is room for improvement up top. But yeah, I mean, who else is Jens Petter Horger has gone for Eintracht. I think they've turned a bit of a profit on him. Kessie has gone out the door. Kessie has gone out the door. Romagnoli, like you said, Caldara. So they've saved a bunch on wages as well while simultaneously making the squad younger. So I think it's a good start. I think it's quite harsh to call this a bad worst, window so yeah. far, particularly if the Ketelare and Ziesch come in. I'm all for it. And I is, think is, it put them in really good stead, wouldn't it? it? One of the issues here is is the context of other clubs, right? So obviously Romagnoli's mm. gone to Lazio, Dybala's gone to Roma, Lukaku's back at, back at Inter. Mm. In that context, this and Pogba going Either. to Juventus. Like in that context, this looks maybe like, like standing still. Yes, and like stasis isn't something you can afford in Serie no. A right now, which is probably the tightest league in Europe. Mm. Um, so from that point of view, it's a little bit worrying. But you know what? They snuck a title last season that, to be honest, we didn't really expect them to, and probably was a little bit earlier than they expected to. Big time. So they can afford to kind of say, you know what? Yes, we won a title, but we were actually building a project to kind of compete for titles regularly mm. from this season to the next five so in that in that kind of uh, ahead of context there yeah. yeah they don't need to worry too much about like oh no what if we don't win the title this year like i was actually looking at the fine. team the most used starting 11 when i was doing research for this and i was like hell peony man <laughs> you've done really well yeah, that's there. amazing uh, let's move on to lesser than a team that you mentioned zach this was sent in by yeah. Liam Anderson, and they were easily the most suggested team. We must have had 140 suggestions. 50% of them must have been Leicester. And it's unsurprising, really. The only Premier League club yet to make a signing, along with Hrona of La Liga. They're actually only one of two clubs in Europe's top five leagues yet to register a new 
player. So Stasis. Have Barcelona registered any of their new players? <laughs> <laughs> technically, yes. <laughs> technically, technically. Yeah. Before the Barca nice. fans come and eat us alive, as they, they are an embarrassment. Though. But this this contrasts really starkly with what Brendan Rodgers was saying in May that he wants to sign five or six new players, and now he's coming out saying, you know what? <laughs> That's probably not going to happen. And Leicester fans are not happy. And and this is pure like Ruben Neves, right? Waving goodbye to the fans at the end of the season. <laughs> Brendan's like, we're going to get in five or six new players. <laughs> and then he's like halfway through summer. It's like, <laughs> like all that we've done is lost our director of football to Atalanta. Yeah. And they're still unlike, maybe we'll get to sell Tielemans to Arsenal. And you know what? The replacement, Lee Congleton's replacement from Southampton, Southampton have put him on gardening leave because obviously he started can't to work engineer summer. all their summer moves. Yeah, which means he can't work this summer. So they've got like John Smart, Rudkin, it, John Rudkin the head of the academy, operating as like the director of football, head of recruitment at, at current. Not an ideal situation. Let's have but, it right though. Like they're kind of okay. Like they're not going to like drop out of the league, right? Mm. But you said uh, prior to going uh, to shooting this that actually if he keeps key personnel fit, mm. there's a really good core of the squad still there. They don't necessarily need to add a bunch of players to sort of sustain that seventh to tenth place in the Premier League. Yeah, you don't want to like purely Arsene Wenger it, but like they have a bunch of guys who, if they're fit this season, will mm. be like new signings. If Fafana's fit this season, if Ndidi's fit for the duration of the season, they can definitely get more out of Daka, who was actually not involved that much last year, last year, despite making quite a lot of the minutes he got in various competitions. You know, if they have Pereira fit and firing, mm. if they have Justin fit and firing, like there, there's a lot of depth in this squad. And obviously those would be added to, to some of the discoveries they made last year principally Dewsbury Hall who okay is he outstanding no but is he a perfectly good squad player for a team of Leicester's level absolutely yeah. he is so I think from that point of view like they're kind of okay and it's not like they're going to do nothing if they shift Tielemans if they shift Sumere they're going to get in another central midfielder I don't really worry that much I still look at the squad and I think could they use a winger Jesus. <laughs> could they use a winger yes could they use a central midfielder yes like of course, they need depth in these positions. They definitely need a new keeper at some stage too. And you wonder if maybe Henderson will go down as a bit of a missed opportunity yeah. there. But I look at Leicester's squad and I still think fully fit Leicester 11 is was one of the best in the league outside the top six, in my mm. opinion. And if Madison is playing in the campaign proper, the way he's playing in preseason, then I, that I'd be really glad to see that, you know, because these are, these are players who I think it's been a bit frustrating um, to be a fan of over the last few years you know like you want to see Pereira at his best and Ndidi and mm. Madison and they haven't quite been there so I don't know I, I, I'm i look I'm not particularly bullish on Leicester but I'm not like desperate they're not like Everton the panic button. they're not like Everton mm. they're going to be <laughs> fine they're going to finish mid-table mm. I, well I think that's the thing that probably uh, contrasts with how Leicester fans you know they're they're where they want the club to be at this yeah, point sure. that represents a little bit of regression right and you can sympathize with that view because there was an opportunity to to stay where they were with a couple of smart signings that that they didn't make i mean last summer i think they put up a net spend of around 50 55 mil and they didn't get a lot of value from those players there's more to come from pats and daka for sure i think he was putting up 0.5 expected goals and assists per night when he played in the league uh, Samare was apparently going to go out on loan to Monaco, but it's impressed pre-season. Okay. So might remain at the club. More to come from him. Vestergaard was a big issue at 15. We didn't like that deal at the time. I don't like it now. Uh, he ha is insisting on staying at the club and fighting for his place. I'm sure that's not exactly music to Brendan Rodgers' ears because... Might be the wages. Yeah, the only the only way he's going to facilitate moves is by selling players, like yeah. you just said, right? There seems to be this air of waiting to see what Tielemans does or what happens with Tielemans before they make any signings. I think if they sold him for 25-30, Rodgers would be able to invest, reinvest all of that. But, um, I mean, you look at the net spender of Leicester over the last few years, it's never been tremendous. Mm. Like, it's always been pretty sensible. So I don't expect them to go out trying to claw back, you know, that that... I don't know, progress, let's say, on who it West Ham, yeah. on wh whoever uh, at, at that point. But what do you make uh, of Leicester so far this season then? And what do you think their aspirations should be for the upcoming campaign? I can understand why, why Leicester seasons. fans are, are, are grieved. Like two seasons ago, they were this close to Champions League football. Mm. Uh, and obviously it, it, didn't, it didn't happen. And then um, if you look at the campaign that, that just went, like 
obviously not to, to their taste, especially after bringing in some of the really interesting signings. Like you mentioned Samar um, and Daka, like we were really excited by them. We felt like these guys could be uh, people to take them on to the next level. And then obviously the Wesley Fofana injury really did hamper them. They they had issues at the back all season. Um, didn't help that Schmeichel was regressing and probably I wouldn't be surprised if he continues to do that as well this season. Um, that's why, as you mentioned, the Henderson move would have been interesting. Even the Pope, like uh, Pope was rumoured to be uh, possibly going to Leicester and, and you can understand why he probably went to Newcastle. The money um, was probably much, much higher. I like the um, way that you've ranked Nick Pope above the Pope now. You called him the Pope. Yeah, it's very true, very true. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I can understand why, why Leicester fans are aggrieved. Um, in terms of the, the question of, is this one of the worst windows? I think... I, I guess so because they've not signed any players where, yeah. where they where they need to, um, but it does seem like a waiting game at the moment of of seeing whether Yuri Tielemans will leave and all this. Which again, I can if Leicester fans are annoyed at that, it all makes sense. Like, it's not fun to to be in a, in a waiting progress, yeah. you're waiting for your club to make that first move or make that thing that happens or, or wait for that um, that first ball to drop so then everything else can happen to, to progress the, your club because the season's only two weeks away mm. and so if you're sitting Crazy. there and you're going we've not signed enough players we've not signed um, any any player in fact uh, you would be doing it <laughs> yeah and it is different when you're waiting for your key player mm -hmm. to his future to become clear before you do any more transfer business yeah. rather than squad players well, must, yeah this is Telemans is not Declan Rice this, he's yeah, not like yeah, the yeah, centre exactly, of the project exactly, yeah. but, but you're right like I mean points if you look at say I mean Arsenal, for example, like last season, the fact that the squad was in was not in a good position when the season started cost them points, which ultimately you could argue cost them Champions League mm. potentially. OK, that's probably not going to happen for Leicester because they're probably not going to be competing for those positions. But um, not having your signings in place for the beginning of the season when your rivals around you have, mm. I don't know, like that, that is a little bit of a problem. Like those things can cost you. That can be the difference between finishing sort of like, you know, 15th and maybe finishing like 8th. I suppose what the saving grace for them might be at the moment is that West Ham's business hasn't been particularly impressive. They look a little bit threadbare still. Wolves haven't really added any meaning. Yeah, the, way, the clubs, are, the the clubs are that is actually a really good way to look at it, I guess, because the clubs around them aren't necessarily uh, un, really. But then you've got Brighton, only, you've got Palace, Hills, only Newcastle, Palace, Newcastle, yeah, yeah, Palace, Palace, Brighton, Newcastle. But I think if I think Newcastle is a bit of a, an, anom an anom a stretch. anomaly uh, yeah. because that's just kind of come out of nowhere. But I think the ones that they need to be worried about is is you're right, the Brighton, the Palace, like. Palace didn't need, really need to make that many signings, but the ones that they have made are quite nice, like the Decore one. Um, Richards. Richards, like they filling the positions that they needed. So if you're if you're looking at your kind of rival teams, like you can, um, you, yeah. those two are the ones Should that are lucky worried. to Nick Doogie but, Friedman as sporting director from Palace yeah. Leicestershire because he's done absolute bits, isn't he? And again, one or two moves could be it. Yeah. You know, like, we, like we've seen them linked to like Nicola Pepe. I think that'd be kind of interesting. Like we've seen them linked, we talked about Charles de Catalara there. Mm -hmm. Like if yeah. they, they get like a signing like that, that's, that's kind of interesting and like another midfielder and you look at them and right. you think this I have is fine but it is getting to the point where I think Brendan Rodgers does need to be paired up with a good sporting director at this point because you look at some of his transfers since he's arrived at Leicester I mean a lot of the, the bedrock of that side arrived in the Puel season didn't it of 18 18 19 mm -hmm. or he got there February 2019 so at least before he arrived and it was Madison Evans um I don't know who else I'm forgetting Sionku oh, good for a season and a half at the very least <laughs> He signed Iosi Perez for 30 million. He signed Dennis Pratt for 18 million, who spent last season on loan at Torino. Torino can't afford the 12 mil that Leicester are demanding for him, so it looks like Dennis Pratt might. Was, was Pratt the player that signed they couldn't the play him for six months? No, that was Adrian Silva. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, all, that was a clang God. as well. <laughs> people liked that Perez move at the time. Mm -hmm. People liked the Vestergaard move at the time. And you know, the 10 players uh, in the final year of the contract now. So it's like ten a, players, yeah, including Tiedemans. There's an issue. Ooh. There's an issue there bubbling under the surface if they don't sort some Doogie th Freeman things Scott. out fairly quickly. Not all of them are, are first team players, but still, man. a lot of a lot of important components uh, are yeah. still in that list. They right, need somebody to take charge of that, man. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> let's need a new sporting director. Oh, well, they've got one, haven't they? The kid, the guy from Southampton, has got a lot of work on his hands. Martin right. Glover. Uh, Wolves, we're moving on to next, which is at Callum's suggestion. He's put, I think they'll struggle this season. Now, they've only signed 21-year-old centre-back Nathan Collins at the moment uh, on a five-year deal from Burnley. Yes, Burnley. indeed. Indeed. Um, but which, which just go, you, you assume he just comes in for um, race? Uh, uh, the centre back, Saïs and, 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 well, think... and Marcel have both left. Yeah, Saïs went to uh, Turkey, I think. Mm. So you assume he comes straight in and, and, and kind of fits into that three at the back. I don't know if you saw the pre-season goal from um, 
I've forgotten his name. I'm just forgetting everyone's name. The <laughs> futsal, no, the futsal player. Max at the back. Kilman. Max Kilman. No, I've got your back, buddy. Brings it on, it. takes the ball like at the back, dribbles past about eight players, and goes on to, and finishes it. I think they are probably they're playing like they're like four 0 up at the time, mm. um, but they're playing against a very poor team. Um, and so I, I think if they keep if they end up keeping Neves, which does seem like it's going to happen, unless Man, <laughs> yeah, unless Man bro. United go he he finally <laughs> give. No, he is because he's, you mentioned it earlier. Like he was in tears on the last home game, which is he, a mental he, thing today. Uh, yeah, he, he like, basically looked like no he was um, interested. He was going to be leaving. I think there's possibly still a deal to be done if if May and I do give up hope mm. on Frankie De Jong and they go, you know what, like we just need to get someone in now. It might have to be Ruben Neves. Um, so there is a possibility that he does leave. But if they do keep him, um, as you mentioned, they've brought in Nathan Collins. Um, Did him, well when Ben Mee got injured last season. Indeed. He had to come in and cover him. Indeed. Like, I mean, Ben Mee going to to Brentford, you know, that could nice be a guy sign. that they could have also picked up actually, um, thinking about it. And also, they've got Pedro Neto coming back from yeah. that big injury. That's a big like, one. if he can have a solid preseason and also, and stay fit throughout this year, like that's a signing in itself, to be quite honest. And Jimenez all year too. Yeah, yeah. indeed, indeed. I mean, indeed. they're going to need those two to hit the ground running because they were so up top, top last yeah. season. They had the second worst expected goal return in the league. Only, uh, only Norwich had a worse record, which is Sick. pretty damning. And for the first half of the season, Wolves had a really good defence, didn't they? I remember mm -hmm. people tweeting out like, Wolves are statistically the fifth, eighth, whatever best defence in Europe right now. We didn't they explain finished, They finished with the sixth worst expected goals against return in the Premier League. It, so they tailed off massively yeah. towards the, to the end of the season. So really, there's not a component of that side that I'm that confident in at the moment. I think Collins is a good, is it Collins? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Nathan Collins is a good signing. Like 20 mil, good profile. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> great signing, great yeah. signing. Who the f is he? Yeah. Uh, Irish, yeah. <laughs> you know, scored, scored a wonderful goal against Ukraine, actually. Um, but I, I can't see them finishing in the top half of the Premier League next season with, with their current squad. What do you make of it? Yeah, I suppose not. I, I mean, it depends. Like, often, often when a manager comes in, like, it can take like a year for teams to get used to a different system. And let's be honest, like, this was a radical change of system. Like, mm. It's a little bit like, uh, you know, when um, when Sarri came in at Chelsea and Chelsea had to, like, get their minds out of just, like, everyone staying in the box and playing, like, absolutely dog shit, turgid, embarrassing football. Um, <laughs> no need for those three buzzwords. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it takes a while to, to make mm, that change. But that change and I seems to happen really quickly with Wolves. It seemed to, but at the same time, like, sometimes I think you put in simple like possession plays, right? It's like, this is a pattern that we follow. The ball goes to this guy and he passes to that guy. And you can do that stuff quite quickly. Conte's really good at doing that when he arrives at a club. But then after that, you have to evolve it. Like it has to, mm. it gets predictable otherwise. And maybe that's where they kind of fell down a bit. I felt but, when there was bad results, you know, Bruno Lodge reverted to the meaning and was like, right, we're Wolves. We play this three is at the it. back, five at the back. But maybe that's, let's, but let's maybe that's the situation that. you're in. Maybe you're like, right, okay, the players need some confidence because like they're, they basically now are like, losing faith in the yeah. project so we have to fall back on something we at least know what know they can do and if you don't have Neto in quite a defensive team it be it becomes difficult because you need those game breakers and without Adama Traore and without Neto you Not don't have those getting on the pitch, yeah, yeah and of course it's been a while as well where we've been saying they need oh, to refresh yeah, they... the midfield Matinho's getting old like yeah, I think yeah. they've I think they've re renewed his contract yeah. one year don't yeah but Matinho is very old now and Neves clearly wants to leave and then Donk has never been much of anything so like they need players <laughs> mm. I wonder if I wonder if he's going to try because he he didn't like Triore in the end um, obviously, he put him on. Uh, he started the first couple of wing, games. He started out really well. Yeah, he is, and yeah. then he's a, bit, a special guy. He though, is. We've met, well, he's a guy that if he finds the perfect system and like, I still quite would like to see him play on the content that right, right back. back. Yeah, um, but now, obviously, with Jetsman, it's not going to happen. But he's a guy that maybe he goes. You know what? He is a special player. He's a guy that if I can get working in the right way, can really take it. Can really, really, need, really help us out. Need any attack and well, reinforcement? He's a game yeah, breaking. But he talent. did end up. But he did to go and send him on loan in, on January. Shows to me that like Bruno Lage was like I'm, I'm not, I don't want him like I don't I'm not yeah. losing him and I like and Barcelona obviously didn't uh, want to go and bring him in and so he's got him back doesn't look like anybody's going to be buying him or getting unless it's a last minute thing obviously there's still a decent amount of time left in the window but it doesn't look like he's going to be leaving and so maybe he tries and gets a system where he can kind of fit in and, and make it work because you are right that he did start with a four at the back and he did change things and it wasn't going well even though they had an unbelievable xg i remember for ages being like how wolves not, it was like how wolves not scored yet they've yeah. got like five xg for a time they were like the sixth seventh yeah. best in the division um best team in the division but but they then reverted back to yeah. uh, they reverted back to three at the back do you, do you know what i think wolves is a great answer because 
I think Wolves could have effectively lost the last couple of windows had they not ha- made an unbelievable signing in Jose Saar. Like, what a bargain he yeah. was for under 10 million. I like Eight Nori. He's still got you know, a, a fair way to go, and but I think he has quite a high ceiling. But, I mean, they missed out on Vatinha, who's just gone to PSG for £40 million. Pounds. They could have had him for 17 mil, tried to renegotiate it down to yeah. 12. And, and uh, who, who, who's he on loan from again? They were like... Uh, uh, Trinquel? Uh, no, Vitinho. They were like, no, oh, anyway, sorry, yeah. we're not going to sell sell him to you because you're being cheeky. Um, and uh, instead, they're in a situation where Neves will probably have to be sold next season because he's got two years left in his contract and they're not going to let that yeah. run down because you know he's, he's a valuable asset. They've had to re-up uh, Matinho, like we've said, for another year. And expensive signings of the last couple of seasons, like uh, Kijana Herva, who was £9 million, is now on loan at PSV. Fabio Silva. He's still really young though, Hoover. They're, they're, they are still really young, but... Fabio Silva, they bank, they bank like, Fabio put Silva, everything on it. To 30, he's still like 19. No, he is. Five mil, he is. gone to Anderlecht, but they need players for the here and now. But they yeah. spent two seasons and it's not worked and out. Like, I should agree, have sent them on loan for those know, two seasons. And when they're running, like, they're in a similar situation to Leicester where it feels like one in, one out. They mm. can't afford to have this many misses and expect to stay, uh, to stay competitive, I guess. I mean, the rest of last season's deals as well. Chiquinho, Mascara. Trincao, they paid five million not to sign. <laughs> I will say, lo- uh, Chiquinho... What? Yeah, exactly. So they don't have to well, pay... like a penalty. There was like an obligation to buy... Exa- yeah. yeah, but if they yeah. sell him to Sporting Lisbon, they get three mil back. So, okay. But still, narrowing business. I like Chiquinho at the end of the season. He started featuring a bit at the end of the season. 208 minutes. And, um, yeah, which, which, was, which of those minutes which, did you like him in? 17 of them when he came right. on against Chelsea and ripped us apart. But it's always, like this. Us apart. it's always like this. Like when they have been aggregated before, you were like, oh, this guy looks like a player. And then it's They've like, it. and then he just disappears like yeah, back yeah, into Portugal, true, like back true. into the mists of Portugal. Like, <laughs> but, so, so all they're going to do, like, I don't know. Like, I, I still think that they're like, they're solid. I don't really fear for them mm. because I think they're probably worse sides in the league. But, um, they need to you're right that like it's not fun if you're a Wolves fan and it becomes a problem quite quickly like if you don't start the thing that Leicester have done right is that they signed young good players for so long that they can have a couple of windows and be okay Mm. Wolves are not in that zone like they they need to make some signings otherwise things quickly fall apart Mm. but but if I if I were Bruno Lage then I would probably look at it and think I might need to get something out of Adama Traore yeah Good suggestion, Callum. Uh, let's move on to Sean McKenzie's suggestion of Leipzig. Let's head back out to the continent. Now, we won't spend too long on this because, I don't know, Leipzig. I think they're all right. Yeah, I think, I think they're, they're an okay squad still. I guess maybe they've lost their tag as the disruptors of German football, like a team that can potentially challenge Bayern Munich because they've lost, what, Upamecano, Nagelsmann, they've lost Canate, so Sabitzar, Werner. Like, they've lost their game-changing players, haven't they? And as a result, have become one of the chasing pack again. So I suppose yeah. you could, that's, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? That there's not oh, yeah. another really, really good team. But on the other hand, they've got Gvardiol and it looks like they'll keep him. Mm. They've got Nkunku and it looks like they'll keep him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Losing Lima, bringing in Schlager, Schlager, that's absolutely fine with me. Tyler Adams going, that is a bit of a disappointment because I think he's quite special, but he's always injured. So yeah. like, again, yeah. I don't really, they'll be, they'll be fine. I mean, the problem they're having is that Dortmund are just having a sensation or something. Yeah. Well, like, that's their biggest issue right now. But you know, Bayern are not, Bayern are not having a sensational summer, in my opinion. Mm. Um, so I still think that they're like... It, the question, I guess, is Leverkusen. Leverkusen become like their closest rivals now. But they'll hold on to Nkunku for another year. They'll hold on to Guardiola for maybe another two. And then those guys go mm. out. And we see what the next iteration of Leipzig is. But they run their team to make money, to compete if they can. They won't be too concerned. I was going to say, yeah. Luki Ailey is being linked to... Um, is it ESG? He's being linked to a club to, yeah, to no leave doubt. as well. Um, which is my mic. It's just it's just disappointing that we've seen an eleven leave, yeah. or the 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 heart of an eleven leave. But over I guess the last two they or three campaigns to... that could have challenged for the Bundesliga, and now it just becomes another walk. In, well, not a walk in the park for Bayern, but they... we're, we're expect we're hoping Dortmund do big things again. I, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if in the, in say the next like two seasons we do see maybe that revival of them trying to challenge again. Um, because it, it, with, with players, money, yeah, it. and maybe look, maybe next summer you end up selling mm. a Kunku, and then they start investing it in. They get all these young boys back in and, and, and try and uh, like the RB, the RB Leipzig model yeah, or the Red yeah. Bull model, or Zabotla explodes, yeah. which yeah, looks yeah, like which it's looks kind of possible. Yeah, yeah, indeed, to indeed. Indeed. I have no idea. Yeah. Like, like they're always. It's always kind of like maybe Olmo will disappear, maybe Zabotla will disappear, and Helena has been linked. You know, it's always Leipzig's business is always. Odd to, yeah. <laughs> to me, but they'll be fine. They're going to fall into the Dortmund model, though, aren't they? Is no star is going to stay. They're never going to be able to build a, a team to 
battle by me every season. We just be... felt close. I guess that's why it's disappointing. I do like yeah. the Schwarga move, though, from Wolfsburg because he profiles really similarly to Lima. Mm -hmm. It looks like Conrad Lima is going to go to Bayern. Uh, but who gets a bit so? That's a good question. I think maybe, maybe, maybe he's going to go back. Uh, let's move on to Liam Rafe's suggestion then. Bournemouth. Zach, speak Ooh. to me about Bournemouth because they feel nailed on to go right back down. Well, them, boy, to be honest, boy. them and Fulham. Them and Fulham. Like, those two, at least with Nottingham Forest, they've come up and they've been busy. Like, and they needed to be because, God, it looked bad um, <laughs> at, at the beginning. Um, and, like, <laughs> but obviously, like, nicking, nicking uh, Nico Williams from Fulham, like, already gives you an advantage, mm. all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas, yeah, Bournemouth and, and Fulham, I think, are kind of both in the same... same um, uh, in the... Yeah, in yeah. the because they've they've just not really been that active in the market. And like I think one of the things when you're a team that comes up to the Premier League, you need to be. Look at Norwich last season. Didn't really make that many deals and the ones they did were poor signings and they went straight back down. And they won the division the previous mm. season. Like it doesn't really matter if you're the one if you whether you win it or whether you're coming um through the playoffs. Like it's all about how you do in that transfer market. Because yes, I do agree that um the championship and the Premier League is much closer than it ever used to be. However, you do need to be smart in the market, like say a Brentford um, was, and, and and how they and how they made their signings, and with the po um, with the possibility of them obviously developing in the Prem. Um, whereas I do worry for like for for for, for Bournemouth, like <laughs> Ryan Ryan so Fredericks is not yeah. not an interesting signing at all. Um, Joe Rothwell from Blackburn, like could be good. Sure, but like, is it? Like, he's, he's God knows. Like, God yeah, knows. Like, man. they've obviously lost. They've lost Gary Cahill. They've lost um, Robbie Brady. Nat, um, Phillips. Nat Phillips may return. Obviously, supposedly Klopp wanted to keep him, see what he was like in preseason, mm. but hasn't been that impressed. But also, um, Liverpool want the same money for him that they got for Nico Williams, and annoyingly, they'll probably get it. Yeah. In what world do you get an 18 mil for Nat Phillips? That's. Class. But at the moment, it's like. But at the moment, it's like Bournemouth are banking on Solanke being great in the Prem. And, mm, and, and even then previously, yeah, exactly. And previously, he wasn't he wasn't fantastic. Obviously, they've got David Brooks coming back, which is fantastic. But you know, he's going through rehab, which is going to take a, which is going to take a long time. And so you just sit there and, and you think, God, this there's an air of resignation about them, isn't there? <laughs> like yeah. at least Norwich were giving it a go by when like we found this eight million pound player in the Bundesliga that we but think might be. But it seems to me like their targets, their targets like Tanganga from Spurs, who That's has right. the potential to be good. Like he, he could be a good centre back. He could also not. Which isn't what you need, in my opinion, if you're a Bournemouth right now coming fine. up to the Premier League. You'd be a, a terrible scout. Listen, this guy could be good. Could, could yeah, be. no, indeed. But like, so, don't you? I've seen Tanganga play, and, I've, and I've had position. Like, I've had, I've seen, I've seen Tanganga play, and there's been games where I've been. You know what? He's been really Sorry, impressive. Your phone is yeah. blowing up, man. Um, yeah, it's yeah, only fans. Yeah, it's yeah, only fans. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, gone mental. You are loading a new video uh, this morning. But Tanganga is, yeah, is a guy who like he's had good games for Spurs but is he going to be but obviously especially when he's playing in a, in a system that has better mm. players around him when he's moving someone like Bournemouth is he going to yeah. be as good also he's been linked to like Milan and Napoli like, <laughs> like, I'd be like am I going to go to mm. you know the British Riviera or shall I go to Milan yeah <laughs> I worry for them same and with Fulham fans. For same Bournemouth Fulham. fans to be like listen if we even if we sign Tanganga even if we sign Nat Phillips we still need about six more guys yeah, yeah I think you're right I think there is this sense of just like uh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> there was a preseason game the other day against Sheffield Wednesday where they Scott Parker tried a back five, and to me that's that was like, listen, we need to have a plan B if like hits the wall with this four three three we've got. And Jefferson Lerma played centre half. Ooh, it tough. was not, it was not great because he's one of the he is one of the most uh, cavalier men who's ever played in the Prem. He got, he got booked like every twelve minutes. It I felt. respect like, it. It just constantly happened. I actually like Fulham's business a lot more. Like I agree, but, what, I but it's barely happened. I, I agree that I don't think it's necessary enough to say up. But at least they were like, yeah, let's go and get like an actual defensive midfielder. I think Nico Williams is a is a good signing. They didn't no. get Nico oh, Williams. No, so they got. Nico uh, Williams. You're about Nottingham. Nottingham Forest. About? Nottingham Forest. No, but they did do somebody. Oh, yeah, whatever. It's gone. It doesn't matter. Like anyway, from, from the point of view of like, oh, uh, in Bam, in Bam, uh, Wolfsburg right back. Mbabu. Mbabu is who they've signed. Well, they've got Mbabu. Very no, and Leno. Signing. Leno is the other guy I'm thinking. Not of. happened yet, but yeah, yeah but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Like, so I think those are like fine. Are they enough to keep them up? Probably not. Mm. But I'd rather bet on Mutro keeping them up than Solanke, Solanke. keeping Bournemouth up. I, I, I'm not saying that it's like good, good business, but it's business that they can live with if they get relegated, which I think is yeah. one of the major things. All you don't want to do is go back down to the championship with a bunch of guys who bleed your club dry on huge wages. Yeah. And I'm also probably like the idea that they've obviously still got um, Wilson as well, Fulham, who, who's 
you know, had a fantastic year last year and, and has already got Premier League experience, Harry, Harry Wilson. Yeah, I just true. think they obviously they need to get... I'm, I was so shocked. I thought they'd get on loan um, Fabio Carvalho. Uh, Car- yeah. Yeah. Carvalho, you yeah. You think he'd re- return um, after signing for Yeah, Liverpool. I thought it would have been a really like it's a nice way of doing it. Liverpool get the man, but also well, then you get ago, Premier League experience. A few days ago, they destroyed pre-season 5-0 for yeah. Liverpool and it was pretty much their B team and Carvalho was off the scales. Uh, but I, I just don't see, is he going to be getting enough minutes that like helps his progression? Because he's still so young. Like There's that opportunity to go back to Fulham where he knows everyone. Um, and, and how the team plays and he can progress and even if they go down like yeah, he's, he's at least saying. getting the minutes because they need at least like okay they get those three people four people in they still need like another three as well for them they do it's really they do. worrying but right. at least they haven't got a doy this time <laughs> you always can go both barrels they've really still got thingy though desperate. yes they do no they don't. no no they've still got the American centre back I thought, uh, Tim, Tim, Ream. They still got I thought Tim, Ream. Tim Ream was like you know Emeritus now. They've still got Tim like, Ream. Kind of like, he'd gone upstairs. They've still got Tim Ream. Tim Jeez. Ream is such a stalwart for them in the championship. Oh, yeah, struggles a little bit in the Prem, bless him. Uh, talking of struggling in the Prem, Matthew Coddington's suggestion, he's put Everton. Come on. Go he, on, Pat. Take he, it away. He's put mate. Everton easily. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's bad. It's Hard bad, to blame bad, them, bad. though, man. Like, I feel like they, well, their transfer is, I guess, okay, in the, yeah. over the past couple of years. So I think but it's for really this transfer window. Yeah. But if you got hired by Everton this summer, you would be like, oh, I can't. This is a yeah. this is a snake pit. I'd look at what I'd be if I was if I was a sporting director that got brought in this summer, I'd be like, what the fuck were you guys doing for the past seven years? Mm. You fed yourself here massively. How did you not go down? By, by a skinny your teeth. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, apologies, they'd, apologies, apologies, they'd probably yeah. be like, this was not a good hire. <laughs> yeah. <made."> in Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Zach, yeah, he's coming, he's called us all. Yeah, yeah. Could be good. Could fair enough. Fair enough. Could, could yeah. not be. I mean, they've recently lost 4 0 to Minnesota didn't they, in pre season, so the hysteria is already. And that's when the Lampard into Yeah, happens. it's already beginning. They are working apparently on a deal to sign Maxwell Corney. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, it's they, good. It's fine. It's they've fine. signed James Tarkovsky on a free. Another, that's good. But they've yeah. lost Richardson, who's literally kept in the division, didn't they? I don't know about Tarkovsky. You don't think to, I don't mind to, for, I a, think for, it's for a, a free t- deal? I think it's absolutely No, fun. no. It, it's, it's more about fit. Like, I think he's a good player, but. It's kind of like when they signed Michael Keane, they were like, Michael Keane, he's a good defender. Mm. Then they put him into like a reasonably aggressive line and he was like, oh, 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 oh this is bad. And similarly, like with Frank Lampard, Frank Lampard's the one thing, the one thing that Frank Lampard has shown he can do is coach a press. That is the one thing he's shown he can do. But centre-backs have a lot to do in a pressing system, especially when they haven't got a proper defensive midfielder in front of them or for that matter, any midfielders mm. or proper fullbacks. Like then they start to get into trouble. Mm. And so Tarkovsky is going from what has been one of the most organised sides in the Prem over the last half decade into a team which is low on confidence with a manager who doesn't seem to have faith in what he's doing with very little protection around him. Like, don't get me wrong, I think it's definitely a signing they should have made, but it's he's not going to fix the defence yeah, by yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they need some midfielders especially and they need probably at least, I mean, having having lost Richarlison, they need at least one like really important yeah. attacker. And so they're a team who... To be honest with you, I would probably look around. I don't think they've got a huge amount of money. So I'd probably be looking around and be like begging people for, mm. for loans. Like, to, yeah. That's where they have to. That's the one thing Frank can give yeah. them here. They might be able to like, if they could loan like a Hudson Adoy. I know we always talk about this about like Pepe and Hudson Adoy and like these guys, but unwanted players at bigger teams. Supposedly it's Gilmore. Might be the way. I, I don't, I mean, sure, get Gilmore. He's a, he's a body. He can press. He's a decent passer. But again, not enough. They mm. need more. They need more presence in there, and they definitely need. I, honestly, is there a position they don't need to strengthen? Like I, I'm, I, I so fear for them. I've read about like, Hermoso's unwanted at Atletico Madrid. I think he's a decent defender okay. as well. They should maybe move for him, like Emmanuel Dennis at Watford. No one still moved for him. Yeah. There is sensible moves for them. Malisar. Sensible moves for them to be had. That's a lot of money. Yeah, he would probably money. cost double. But, but I, I think maybe they need to just rein in their ego a little bit as well, because they shouldn't be making signings that. Uh, propel them into the top half of the Premier League oh, table again where they feel like they belong comfortable. it should be about yeah 10th to 13th who is going to help us get there Maxwell Cornet maybe if he can put up another what 8-9 Premier League goals like he did at, at yeah. Burnley in very limited minutes but like look at like, but, like Barcelona are trying to bin people left and right like you're telling me that like a Ricky Puj or, or a Depay couldn't do a job for Everton on loan if they're like oh, we'll, pay wa- wow. we'll pay wages full freight for a year like I think these things they might not be possible now, but they may be possible as the window winds on. Mm. And I think that Everton in the last couple of weeks of the window are probably going to have to be like, who is desperate yeah. to get out of their club? We'll pay your wages for a year and please just keep they us pay, up. They play Chelsea on the first day. Um, yeah, that's fine. 
Uh, at Slash's suggestion is Atletico Madrid. We just touched upon them very, very briefly. Now, I didn't realise until doing a little bit more research just how kind of dire their financial situation was. So they're being penalised this, not, not as dire, dire in the same sense as like Barcelona, but they spent too much on wages last season, so they can only reinvest. Um, it's like a one to three system. So, you know, so if they earn yeah. 90 million, they can only reinvest 30 yeah. because they are being penalised by oh. La Liga for overspending. And they want to try and get Ronaldo. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, the cool, Mar cool. Uh, who I just said, Mar uh, Maratta, Jesus, took me a little while to get out, and Sol Niguez have both returned to the club. Obviously, uh, Chelsea, Juve really want Morata, don't Juventus they? and Chelsea chose not to exercise yeah. those options to buy at 35 mil. I think they were kind of banking on one of them coming in at the very least as well. So all had no chance. Uh, so they uh, haven't really got assets anymore. Morata has a poor working relationship with Simeone. Yeah. Uh, he's burnt a few bridges. Simeone burnt a few bridges with Niguez as well. Um, yeah, it's where is the money going to come from? Like who are like Vitolo has well, gone out. Sure there been. was that Man Hector City. Hector Herrera's there. gone. vishalko has gone. Luis Suarez is obviously off the uh, wage books. Yeah. But, you, but it used to, we used to talk about Atletico Madrid and we were like, we were like Saul at that point was like a hundred million pound player. Like Coque was like 60 mil, nearly went to Barca. Jimenez was like similar kind of range, like was heavily linked with Chelsea and City at one stage. Yeah. Uh, and in those days, obviously Griezmann too. Mm. And now you look at them and you're like, Ooh, that's it. it. I mean, there are players I like there. Like, I like Lordi. I like, you know, Hermoso. I like all these mm. guys. But would I pay big money for them? Absolutely not. And I think that they're going to... I think that this might be like a Mendes situation. Like, they've got this relationship yeah. with Mendes. I think Mendes is maybe going to try and shift a bunch of their guys out. You well, can see like, where they're at. Like, they tried really hard to bring, I think, Bubakar, uh, Kamara in. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he ended up going to Aston him. Villa. They tried really, really hard at the start. Which has a lot. To, to bring him in. Obviously, he ended up with Axel Witzel instead. But the fact that they are, they kind of doubled down on this free transfer does show they're struggling for, for funds a little bit. And they lost out to Aston Villa. Like, they can't compete with middling Premier League sides for wages anymore because a bunch of the guys they won the league with renegotiated contracts around that Halcyon yeah. period. And they paid them loads of money and like, like Diego Simeone isn't he the best paid coach in the world yeah, as well yeah, like yeah, yeah. they've got way. guys on huge huge wage packets that aren't playing like huge players yeah well I mean how much did they spend on Tamar Lamar in the uh, couple of seasons back well like he actually had a better season last season in the yeah, end yeah, yeah in the end yeah. yeah but it's like those kind of deals which in the end have uh, come back to yeah to there's been a few of them that haven't represented great value for money maybe more than a few but this is the problem with having a guy at the club who is like so revered in the, in the form of Simeone in that like clubs don't always differentiate between how good somebody is as a coach and how good they are as a recruiter mm. right so we we've seen this in Prem with guys like Rogers or Howe um, and certainly we're seeing it you know with, with Simeone where for a long time he's preferred a known quantity to taking a risk so they got back Carrasco like they, they they've they got back they got in Maratta like they they've brought back Griezmann they they've kind of done these things again and again where maybe they'd have been better off doing mm. something a little bit more outside the box um, that would have safeguarded the future of the club instead they've ended up with a squad that feels very similar to where it was a few years ago and probably this season pretty much requires Felix to go supernova mm. which at some point it looks like he may well do he had a, he had a good he had, he had a, a really, really good, good season year last, last year, year man but it's a lot to. You don't and the thing is, but even if he basket. does, even if he does, like they're not going to win the league, like no, they're not, not, like they'll probably come. No, they I'm can come second. Price, no, it's quite sad for them that I actually now that they've lost ground on Barcelona, despite Barcelona going through like one of those tumultuous uh, periods. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Their... Barcelona will stop existing. Yeah, right, fine. Yeah, fair. <laughs> but Barcelona, Barcelona's just not existing. Um, I feel like every Barca fan out there feels like it's them versus the world at the moment. <laughs> the way people comment is like, "You guys absolutely hate us." It's like all this. Sh it's like. Yeah, Dumbest, oh. We don't. We fairly judge yeah. you on how yeah. stupid you are. Now, like they're now just selling NFTs so that they can try and go and buy players. They went and got Ferran Torres for big money. Then they were like, oh, we need another striker, actually. Let's get Aubameyang, who's 33, going on 34. Oh, no, we actually need another striker who's 33, going on 34. Let's get in Lewandowski. Nagelsmann's indifference when he was oh. asked about the whole situation like, earlier in the week. It'll like, probably be better. <laughs> yeah, the only club in the world that uh, don't have any money continue to buy players. <laughs> yeah, and continue to like... <laughs> Chelsea, well, did you not hear about? Did you not hear about um, what he said about Lewandowski? No. He was like, oh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably be more free flowing now that Lewandowski's gone." Oh well, I, I think <laughs> that, <laughs> probably not. But wrong. that's been a theory for a while, right? <laughs> yeah, that yeah, he yeah. like 
He's never really enjoyed conventional strikers. You could see like Mane, Sané, Nabry with Muller, <laughs> Musiala. Absolutely, just. Ooh. I mean, I think that I think they could be really fun this year. Total season. football back again. Delicht in the back. Rumours they want De Jong. Upa Makane. Oof. Nice. Missouri nice. at right back. Uh, let's move on to our quick fires then. I'll um, and the first one comes from Pink Greg. Uh, segues nicely from Lewandowski. Who will win the European Golden Shoe? And that's Pink Greg from the Football Daily Discord. And if you're not following, if you're not part of the Football Daily Discord, let's say, then click the link in the description below. Uh, lovely, lovely guys that are at the heart of that. European Who will win the European Golden Boot? Yes. Uh, Harry Kane. Oh, straight up. What are you saying? Mbappe. Mbappe. Oh, I probably should have gone yeah. Mbappe, to be fair. Yeah, they're yeah, probably going to pillage league again, again, aren't they? Maybe Lionel Messi. We'll see. Maybe Lionel Messi just... Messi was yeah. actually unreal last yeah. season. I don't know how this narrative has become that Messi was bad. Messi was phenomenal. Mm. And actually, his goals and assists per night are, exact, are like the same as Ronaldo. In fact, they're slightly better, but all the Ronaldo fans are just like, oh, he barely got any goals. He got like... He got so many assists in the league. Uh, uh, <laughs> I saw the, I I saw the clip of you... Uh, he posted on Twitter where, like, for pre-season, he's like just dropping into he's playing like behind and, the centre back at times. Like, yeah. Yeah. I would love, I would love the last like two years of him, where, where club, whatever club he's, he's at, he just goes, "I'm going to play DM today." Like. He's playing like the yeah. falsest, I'm play me centre mid, the falsest <laughs> false nine you've ever seen. He's like picking it, uh, he's like below Vatina in that clip, and I'm just like the right wing is just like, well, I'm not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like left foot bang. This is like he because he's one of those guys, isn't he? Like Rooney used to do this. And yeah, I, remember, really, I remember Van Persie used to do mid, this yeah. at Arsenal when he would look around and be like, oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> look at these players. And you'd see Van Persie pick the ball up on the edge of his box <laughs> and then a few minutes later he'd score. Like, it's just players after a while are just like, this. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'll just do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, let's move on to personal questions then. We've got a couple here. Uh, quick one then from Zach Kingdom. Orange or apple juice? Go. Orange. Always been an orange fan myself. Oh, that's a toughie. More vitty I'll go. Right? I'll go orange. I'll go orange. But apple is great. What, D? what are you saying? Uh, C. 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 But D is in the sun, sun, right? Yeah. Yeah. The sun Just, gives you the D. I think that's. I've had too much of that at the moment. Not the D. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. And been on the ground. I'm gonna have to go for. This earring might change things. Um, I'm gonna have to go for <laughs> orange. And let's yeah. move on to the last question then. The last one's from Lewis. Everyone's music. Guilty pleasure. I'm guessing an artist that people wouldn't expect to listen to, but you like to get down to. Maybe in the shower. Maybe while you're washing the dishes. Uh, Taylor Swift, uh, Romeo and Juliet. What is it? I can see you you banging that out. Any, to be fair, there's a few. There's a few. There's a few Taylor Swift ones where you're like, okay. Taylor Swift. Go on. Go on, T Swift. It's a solid answer. Yeah, that's fine. Same with Ed Sheeran, I guess. I've always not minded a bit of Ed Sheeran. I don't know, man. Oh, Cause like, cause uh, I'm not really embarrassed by the music yeah, I like. Exactly. It's like it's, it's music. Like it's fine. There's uh so do you remember Nature's Law by oh, who was it? It was like the Eng- England's official song for the Euros. Oh my god. In the early noughties. Who sung it? I can't. I've I never heard that song. Nature's I don't Law. know what he's talking about. Nature's I remember when I was a kid, I, fu- I absolutely love busted. That's yeah. not I a guilty love pleasure. Busted. And also when you're a kid, you're allowed to like kids' music. Yeah, but that's that, not embarrassing. Yeah, very true, very true. Very very true, very true. A uh, bit of a lackluster ending, but there we have it. That's a bit of a weird question. Uh, okay, that is the end of Sunday Vibes for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Zach, what else is happening across Football Daily? Uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, check out uh, We Need to Talk, where I slated your pre-season predictions. Not one of them was good. Check it out uh, on We Need to Talk. That went out on Friday. Slated. Slated. I don't know why. I what else on that. the Football Daily slate? I've literally no idea. No, he has no idea. Uh, Just... Check us out on TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. We're right. everywhere. So follow us everywhere. No. Only fans. Not yet. Never. Top 1% worldwide. No. Zach Jellop. Can I be your agent? It's an in-house Jake. You're never going to find Is out what no? it's about. 